I would have to say the best part of doing these bad tab videos is being able to go back in my mind and remember when I first got these books, whether it was in the mail or going to the store and getting them. And just that feeling of excitement that I had when I was holding it in my hands and I was like, okay, I get to finally play these riffs and these licks uh, the right way. And I'd have that rush of adrenaline, I'd go home and I'd start to learn out of them. With this book in particular, that feeling kind of faded fast. If they could have put a camera on my face when I first got the book and then I started looking through it and you just saw my smile start to diminish, uh, it happened pretty quickly. So uh, this book is very frustrating in the fact that it's really difficult to learn out of for 10 different reasons. If you look at it, the pages, you know, I'm used to just guitar tab. So it's usually a line of guitar tab followed by maybe three or four more lines of whatever I'm learning. In this book, we have all these different staff. So we have one for vocal, then one for other, which is really strange. Like there's gonna suddenly be some maracas or something. Uh, then we have guitar one and guitar two, which makes sense. The bass line is included, which is actually pretty cool. Then the drum uh, notations actually in here as well. So there's a lot going on. And so part of the reason why this is frustrating is because all those parts are in this book, there are only 10 songs in the whole book actually, but it's this thick. So if you're just the guitar player, you're gonna be turning a lot of pages just to get through one song. And that really frustrated me back in the day. It still does actually. The second frustrating part of this book is that because there are so many parts that are scored out, they had to shrink the ledger line so small and they used a really goofy font. So some of the ones look like fours and the threes look like fives. And when you're soloing and you're learning all these intense Dimebag Daryl licks, they're all crammed together and it just becomes a mess. It's like you need a magnifying glass to sometimes decipher some of these solos. So they could have fixed a lot in this book if they just would have only included the guitar parts and if they used a better font that wasn't so cryptic. The third frustrating part of this book is it lacks power chords. So if you look at some key riffs, they're really weak compared to the real version because they just didn't include the full power chord. Uh, here are some examples. Oh, I'm back to the using the enhancer pedal as the page holder, just so you know. Okay, so let's check out Heresy right off the bat. So what makes this so powerful is the way the guitar goes. But the book only includes the open E string. So they're having us go. Okay, now let's look at the verse riff for Domination. You know how heavy it's supposed to be? It's supposed to follow the kick drums, the bass guitar is following, everything's supposed to just kick you in the face, right? But when it's just the open E, it sounds so weak. Now, if you just added power chords to all that, check out the difference. It just punches you in the gut the way it's supposed to. Now I was actually being a little bit generous for that last transcription where it just goes. Because in the book, they actually neglected to put most of the palm muting notation. So if you read a lot of the Metallica tab, the good ones, they always say PM and they put dots underneath like a line where you're supposed to palm mute. And for a beginner, that's very helpful. A lot of people are like, you should just know where to palm mute the chords. But when you're a beginner, you tend to take the stuff like it's uh, gospel, you know, you take it literally. So if it doesn't say palm mute back in the day when I was first learning it, I wouldn't do it because I trusted the book so much. That was a good lesson. Trust my ear, not the book. So the lack of palm muting notation forces a beginner to sound more like this for domination. <laughs> such a huge difference than if you're going the lack of palm muting really wrecks cowboys from hell as you could probably imagine let's take a look at the verse without power chords and without palm muting it's like a whole nother song isn't it compared to I wonder if Dimebag looked through this book back in the day and just wept. Sadly, a lot of the tunings in this book are incorrect. You'll notice that's a common thread uh, between a lot of bad tab books. And what's sad is it really wrecks the vibe of the song because if you're not in the correct tuning, it doesn't have the same punch. For example, Walk is actually supposed to be everything tuned down a whole step. So it's supposed to be D standard tuning, but they have us going drop D. Now, if we take a look at the song This Love, it's kind of weird because he goes through this entire explanation in the beginning of the song. He's like five different paragraphs explaining what to do. He never mentions tuning down. 
So it's a big missed opportunity. So I remember playing this on a standard tuned guitar and I was going. And then I played along to the recording and it was a half step off and it ruined my day. <laughs> Another reason why this book is so frustrating is because the transcriber left out a lot of the natural harmonic notation. So during Mouth for War, during the verse, when it's supposed to make that real crazy metallic sound, he didn't put the harmonics, which he could have easily done. He just put three big X's. So usually that just means to mute. So you do something like this. So it would sound like this. I'm going to go with how they transcribe it. Which is not nearly as badass as how it's supposed to be. Sounds like you're pounding an anvil with a hammer or something when you do it the correct way. Also, if there happens to be a really high dive harmonic, like that sort of thing. In this book, sometimes they'll just put a weird circle with a squiggle in it, and then it'll say arm, and it'll have this squiggly line afterwards. So just really weird ways of transcribing some of the coolest dime bag techniques. Here's something that I've seen with a lot of dime bag tab, and that's whenever he does really intense palm muting, they'll actually transcribe the chord as a half step higher than it actually is. And uh, I understand why if you palm mute really hard, it tends to raise the sound of the pitch. But it's really unfortunate that, for example, in Domination, one of the coolest parts of any Pantera song is when it breaks down to the open E power chord muted, and it's supposed to sound like this. They have it as F instead, and they don't have the palm mute, so you end up sounding like this. I just imagine that poor kid, okay, it was me learning it out of the book, showing up and jamming with other people who actually know how to play the song, and being off by a half step because of the way it was transcribed. And of course, there are just huge mistakes in the way the riffs were written out, so I'm not tuned for it, but Walk, for example, they say to go. So they're actually having you fret the second fret, first fret open, versus doing that really cool half step bend on the first fret. which makes all the difference. And they messed up a whole bunch of the Cowboys from Hell main riff, which is one of my favorite riffs as well, but they have us going. Isn't that ending goofy? They could at least had us going. Even though that's not right either, it's a lot closer. So compare that with the actual way to play it. I'm not sure how they messed up this next part so bad, but they transcribed this part as. See how difficult that ending is if you do it the way they say? It's really just supposed to be. Okay, I have to show you the heresy riff. So the real version is supposed to be more like. I'll play their version real slow so you can really see what's going on. The book says. Even up to speed, that would sound weird. When compared to the real version. There are a few solo parts that they transcribe so incorrectly that it makes it almost impossible to play even if you practice 10 hours a day for 10 years. A lot of it's because Dimebag has his own crazy uh, fretting hand patterns, big stretches usually, and they're very repetitive and they make sense when you learn the shape. But if you don't know them, it sounds like total chaos. So I can see why the guy who transcribed them had no clue uh, what was going on. Here's an example. Cowboys from Hell has this nice big stretch, 11th fret, 12th fret, 15th fret. And if you pick it correctly, it actually rolls pretty well. Faster. Okay, you're not going to believe how the book says to play that part. I'm just getting, I don't know, really bad flashbacks trying to relearn it. But I can only really do it slow because it's almost impossible to do it up to speed. They want us to do these Leonard Skinner rolling type pentatonic licks instead. So they want us to go. Something similar to that. 
Now, trying to do that up to speed anywhere near the speed of the actual song, good luck. <laughs> Maybe someone like Brent Mason can do it, but uh, damn, that's hard. Especially when you compare it to what you're really supposed to do, which is just this three note pattern. It's a major head shaker, and the same thing happens with the Domination solo. Dimebag has us doing these big stretches. That's the pattern. He does it a little bit differently, but you can see if you just know the stretch and you get the pattern down, you can get it flowing pretty well. I don't even really want to show you what they have us doing because it's so wrong, but I don't know. Plus, I can't do it up to speed. I'll do it slow. I don't know. Compare that to just going like this. And then the final reason this is so frustrating is because of these really weird, odd things they just added to the book for some reason. Like in the beginning of Cowboys from Hell, they tell you that you're supposed to use a sequencer to start the beginning of it, right? And it's kind of funny because they put the details into the weirdest places. So instead of actually getting the tablature correct for the song, they tell you things like, okay, use a sequencer for this part. This other part can be duplicated with a digital delay, that kind of stuff. They also have really weird chord markings. <laughs> During that part of Psycho Holiday, above it, they say things like A on G sharp. So just another head scratching moment. And then at the end of Cowboys from Hell, by the way, this is the only song they did this with. They decided to put all the different endings on one page at the very last uh, part of the song. So if you go to the end of the book, if you look at the last part of Cowboys from Hell, there's just a bunch of endings, a bunch of codas just all written on one page, just blocked together, four of them on one page. And I kept thinking, man, if they just put the guitar parts in this book instead of trying to score out every single part of the band, they would have had plenty of room and wouldn't have had to resort to doing something like that. All right, everyone, hopefully that was fun to watch. I know a lot of people watch these Bad Tab videos and they feel better. They're like, man, I could just vent my frustration through you when I watch these videos. A lot of people feel vindicated because back when they were learning it out of the book, they felt like they were terrible. And hopefully having me make these videos is helping you sleep at night now. All right, everyone, hopefully that was fun to watch. It was fun for me to record this video. I love Pantera. Anything related to Pantera, I love doing. So uh, it was a lot of fun for me too. All right, guys, we'll catch you at the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.